saw two deer here. What's happening, y'all? Another week down. <clears throat> so I told y'all last week I fucked that challenge up pretty bad. I'm not buying a knife for 40 days. Apparently that was a bad influence because I believe Steve fucked his up too. Uh, so uh, I hadn't got that knife in yet. I went to my buddy Aaron's first. And he's sending it to me with some other stuff. Uh, some other deal we worked out on another knife. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, I seen this deal. And I was at Blade Show, I don't know, years ago now. And uh, I seen Crusaders, Crusader Forge. I always dug them, but I always kind of missed that. I missed having that opportunity. I missed the opportunity to buy one then. That's pretty much what I'm getting at. So I kind of always regretted it. So I seen this one come up right here for a good price. I figured, yep, yeah, it's time. Let's go ahead and jump on it and see what we do with it. Um, this one's got a few issues, but that's how would you get when you buy used shit, right? Like almost all my knives that you see on this channel are all been used. Uh, I think out of the bruises I got on the table right now, this is the only one I bought new. And ironically enough, I'm not I'm not the one that ever took it apart. My buddy uh, Chuck Nunface wanted to took it apart, and actually he's the one that put the edge on it too. So I've never even took this one apart. I've played with it tension wise, but I never took it apart. Like, like kind of sounds weird, but this truth. Like, Never had a need to really take it apart. Always been a good knife for me. Uh, and uh, all the other knives you've seen on this channel all at least came through at least one other person. Like whether they did or didn't do something, so I, I don't know. So, you know, your, your results are probably gonna vary. But I'm just gonna talk about this one briefly, right? <clears throat> so this is a Fears for Prey model and they come way different lengths and stuff like that. Um, dig the overall knife. It's really beefy, blocky somewhat crude machine to somewhat precision machine, depending on how you look at it and where you look. I don't know if you can see that. The height of that pivot. See how high that pivot screw is sticking up? So that's kind of odd to me. Like, you could have machined that down a little bit, right? And then if you look on these ball grooves right here, right here, you see they're they're done. This this part, looking from this angle, looks done, right? Looks, looks really good angle-wise. But if you look at, he chamfered all that stuff by hand. So it's got a little bit of that hand element into it too. Uh, same back in here with the chamfers back in here. Good access back in here. You get two fingers in the claw it open. Even the flipper tab. You see how the flipper tab is kind of ground like that? It's basically so when you're choking up on it, if you choke up on it, it doesn't it doesn't really pinch your finger. You can choke up on this thing. It's just not the most comfortable. You're kind of in between the sharpening choil and the flipper, and you know you can get down it. Not the same. I ain't saying you can't. You can get on it, but it just kind of feels weird. I guess not as comfortable as I would hope to be. <clears throat> it's a good size knife. It's pretty much the same size as I saw too. So you can see, yeah, I've got a little bit of palm hanging out, but not much, man. It's, it's a big knife. <clears throat> you can see that the blade doesn't even come close to the end. So he could have probably shaved, I don't know, three eighths of an inch off the end of that if he wanted to. He made it a little shorter knife. So you can see the handle to blade ratio looks a little off. Who cares? Care about that? I really don't. I dig it for what it is. I like it a lot. <clears throat> the main thing. Well, there's two main things, I guess, issues with this one. Um, let's see if I can show you. Can you see that? I can't really see it. I'm trying to get the light right. You better bear with me a little bit. You see how that you see the black magic marker and then the, the bevel above it on this finished edge right here? Th that finished edge on the top is me starting on the KME at 30 degrees. So this thing is a full max. So I'm thinning it out, making it more acute but at 30 degrees. So you can see it's really a really obtuse grind, like almost to a point of, I won't say not usable, but less usable, put it that way. And it didn't come sharp. So you gotta do something with it, right? Right away. <clears throat> so um, Mike Cutty Cuts, and I did Cutty Grinds. I think it's two different channels actually, on or two different uh, feeds on Instagram. Uh, I met Mike basically because he bought a custom stitch. I was just, basically congratulating him, telling him how badass that knife was and ended up buying a Microtech stitch. This has been, I don't know, probably six, eight months ago. I don't know. Probably got a video in it somewhere in the past, but that's who I got this through. Well, Mike's into the same kind of knives I am, right? Or at least similar. And then he's also learning how to grind and doing regrinds. I don't know if it's his knife, somebody else's knife or whatever, but he's doing awesome. It looks really good. And uh, I asked him if he could do a regrind on it. And uh, I don't know whether he will or won't, but he, I'll, I'm gonna send it his way and see if he can try. Like, if, if, he, if he doesn't want to, that's fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to push him if he doesn't want to do something. I just think it's a cool, it'd be cool to get somebody who's into the same kind of knife stuff do the mod work for it. 
Um, this thing does have lock stick. I don't know if you heard it or not. I've got this tang painted up with the magic marker right now. But you can even see that little silver mark right there where it's dug into it. The more it does, the more it sticks. It's getting a little bit better, but I don't think it's going away. When I got it, it was actually powder coated on that that face there and on the inside of this lock bar that's brown. So I, I, when I pulled it apart the first time, I immediately just took a little sandpaper and, and took all that Cerakote. I'm assuming it's Cerakote, but it could be got KG or something. I don't know. Uh, and I ain't really sure I'm going to keep it these colors. Like I, I kind of got the feeling already that I'm going to be blasting this tie and then I'll probably end up, depending on if Mike grinds it or not, but I'll probably end up doing like an acid stone wash or something to the blade. I, we'll see, you know, make it kind of look more like the, the sawtooth. And this one's back from Steve now. Uh, I'm probably going to sell a few sawtooths, but I ain't 100% yet. Like I'm probably going to sell a couple knives. That'll probably be next week. We'll see. You know, definitely going to be selling some stuff, but I don't know whether I'll do it here or just put it on Reddit or Instagram or whatever. If y'all got any feelings about that, let me know. I don't even know how I think about it, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Cheesy sales on YouTube stuff, I don't know. I feel weird about that shit sometimes, but it's also an easy way to show people knives. Whatever, I'm rambling like a motherfucker. Um, so this knife's kind of just blocky and almost crude, but refined at the same time. It's, it's weird, it's, it's hard, hard to describe the overall feel of it, but it just feels like a real manly knife. I just kind of think it's going to go, once I get the regrind done, I think it's going to go in the collection really well. Kind of dig it. Real beefy guy. Um, I'm going to try to do a little editing on this one, so I'm going to try to do a little top down or tabletop, whatever other people call it. Just basically showing some more of my other bruisers, bruisers and kind of comparing them. And then I'm going to kind of do a little uh, machinist thing about how to measure for a bearing pocket. Uh, and basically how to use calipers because I'm imagining you could probably search for a video and somebody show you how to use calipers but I'm going to show you how to use them and a couple other things to use to figure out what kind of bearings you need what size and whatnot. All right, hang tight let's do this editing thing alright we're kind of like on the tabletop as you do I guess you'd call it that <clears throat> these are pretty much my bruisers or what I consider my bruisers what I like to carry pretty much one of one of these guys on a daily basis if not two of them like I know I'm stupid that way. And then I usually carry some kind of backup or something like JD for EDC commented the other day because like, this is a little baby Hess that I got. I was carrying it in the DSK kickstand the other day. He was like, is that your smallest knife? I was like, ironically, the biggest and the smallest in the same picture. Uh, I like big beefy stuff. Like you can even see this is the daily. So <laughs> unfluted eight cylinder three feet to seven. I don't think most people took one of those around there on their hip, but I'm just dumb that way, I guess. So you can see in the realm of the big bruisers I got, the Crusader kind of fits right in there lengthwise, widthwise, thicknesswise, all that stuff. <clears throat> it's right in that realm of the same kind of nice like I like. Uh, I think once it's once it's uh, all finished, you can see how close it is to Satu in the size. Like it's just almost perfect there for me. That's that's this is my wheelhouse right here. Y'all, I think you guys know that. And lengthwise, this is the longest one I got. XM24 just barely, I mean barely squeaks in as a bruiser for me. Uh, um, but I just basically want to give you the what I would consider bruisers and show you that that's pretty much fitting right in the, the realm of perfect for me. All right, then. Talk to you in a second. All right, guys, we're back now. I got the Crusader blowed apart there. We're going to go over how to measure and basically how to use calipers and, and some other little stuff that's laying around here. Okay, so get my hands in here. This is an old ass set. So first thing you want to do, these are dial calipers. These are brown and sharps. These are old ones. I don't think they even make these, or have made these particular ones for a minute. Uh, so you see how I closed it? Make sure your needle's on zero. This is gonna move because these calipers are old and janky. There's another way to look, to see if your calipers are good. And it's basically, you wanna make sure this is clean in here and in here, right? Close them up and look at the light and see if you see light in between there. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna see it right now, but when I hold these other the light, there's definitely gaps in this, okay? That means these calipers are not the best calipers, okay? This is one edge that you're gonna be measuring in. The precision edge is between this bevel and this tip. You can use this part up here, but this is what these calipers are designed to be used for. It's down here in this little bevel, okay? So you get in on a very fine point. You also have another point here. So this, is, this point is for measuring like ODs or something, right? Over here is for measuring IDs, so this way. See how that's pre precision ground the opposite direction? And the, this one's precision the other way? Okay, same thing. So they're measured 
OD, or yeah, OD is in this side, ID is in this side. You can also use calipers for depth. So if you have a surface here and you're measuring off that surface, you can use it for this, okay? These are, these are actually good calipers for that, or were back in the day. And you can also use this end for calipers the same way, putting in, measuring the depth. See how I'm moving that, measuring the depth? Okay, so there's a few ways you can use calipers, okay? That's the first little uh, tidbit. All right, now, how do I measure calipers? Well, let's just assume this was on zero and stays at zero, which you probably ain't going to, because like I said, these are, it's been dropped, beaten, banged, and everything else. These are probably as old as I am, or close to. Um, so, you see these numbers up here, right? You see all that? Okay, so obviously one is one inch, okay? So the one is 100, 200, 300, 400. So in other words, if I just stop, I'm just gonna stop randomly on this. You can see the one and the two, but this, this mark, this edge right here, you look up at the scale there, is not past the three. So we're in 200 range, and then add your dial to it. So the dial's upside down right now, which it normally wouldn't be, because these copper sucks. I'm gonna roll around where you guys can see it. If my eyes are right, that's sitting at 68, right? So that's 268 thousandths. That's what that's saying right there, because that's what the reading you were reading here or here was. It'd be 268 thousandths. Or if you're using it for depth, if you're on a surface banking and measuring into the surface, like the pocket of the bearing or something like that, that would be 268 thousandths. Same thing on this side. If you were banking here and using this, it'd be a height or a depth either way, right? Hope that makes sense. All right, so that's a basic overview of the calipers and how to use the calipers and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this fears for prey and we're gonna measure this bearing and the bearing pocket to see what if you were gonna put bearings in something how you would go about figuring out what bearing you were using and what the right way is okay so I'm just gonna pull this bearing out let's just pull the whole blade off actually um there we go so you can see the bearing in its pocket down there pivot's about to fall out I'm just gonna set it down for a second so you get a pivot hole plus the pivot not necessarily the same two sizes and then you get a, a, a bearing all right so the the bearing on this, you have basically three measurements you're gonna do when, you, when you're selecting a bearing. OD, which we just talked about a minute ago, which is gonna be the outside diameter, and you're gonna measure it. Like, it's hard to do this under the camera here. So you're gonna measure it. Okay, this is slightly tapered, so I gotta angle the calipers, which is not normally what you do. Something like this is not normally what you do. And I'm actually gonna go up to this square surface just to hold it so it, it makes sense for you guys, okay? All right, so now we're holding the calipers on the OD of it. If you look at the dial or the scale here, it's in the, you can see the four, but you can't see the five, right? So we're 400 plus whatever the dial is reading. And let's flip it back around so you guys can read the dial. And once again, normal calipers won't be as janky as this one, all right? So this is reading 57, okay? So that's 457 thousandths OD, okay? That's what that's trying to tell you. So if you're looking up bearings, when it says OD, that's the outside diameter. That's how you measure the outside diameter, okay? Now we're looking at the inside diameter, which is using the other part of the calipers that we just discussed. And if you watch what I'm doing here, I'm gonna try to stick it in here where you guys can see it. Um, you try to get the best surface you can. You put a decent amount of pressure. Pressure is something you gotta kinda learn as a machinist, right? You gotta learn how much pressure to go. And you kinda twist, you can either twist the calipers or twist the bearing until you get that kinda stop point, okay? So we're gonna look at it again. You can see the two, but you can't see the three on the scale. So that's 200, plus whatever your dial is reading, which this one right here is out on 59. So it's 259 thousandths ID, okay? So what that's telling you, if you if you do the decimal equivalent of a, of a pin, or of a, yeah, let's say the top pin, it's basically saying it's a quarter inch ID, and the 450 OD is probably really 437 OD, or something like that. So it's basically, uh, you know, 7 sixteenths OD and quarter inch ID. I did that math in my head. It's roughly what they're basically saying. We're gonna measure the pocket here in a second. <clears throat> Another way you can uh, check it, if you had precision gauge pens, and I'm just gonna show you this set just for a second. So these are all different numbers. These are a thousandths of an inch. So if I took this 250 pin, this is a quarter inch pin, precision ground pin now. Granted, that's a janky ass little Chinese set probably, but you can see this quarter inch pin fits in here, no problem bearing has played, you see how it's played in there? So you know this bearing is probably set up for a quarter inch, okay? If you do the math on most of the bearings, they're gonna come out to a, usually a standard either English or 
metric standard and you can kind of sort of see that there's going to be slop in there it's not going to be an exact fit same when i measure this hole first when i measure the pivot it's going to be slightly different why well because you have tolerance on this so this has to slide through this so it can't be the exact same size right make same with the holes in your scales and, and, and stuff so when people talk about tolerance what that means is how many what how you know what's the tolerance between here and here that you're shooting for and then how close you're holding it you cannot tell me that it's a good tolerance knife from one knife if you had a hundred of them in front of you and you measured every one of those holes and every one of those holes was exactly the same within a thou then you're holding the tolerance so people that say holding tolerances i don't get it from a machinist's point of view it doesn't make sense to me all right ramble over okay last measurement we have for the bearing is what's the thickness okay so when i say in thickness i'm not measuring the cage i'm going to measure the ball of the bearing okay so this ball let's see if i can get it in here good and the calipers probably aren't measuring right so don't take the actual measure i'm at as this is the bearing that's in this knife i'm just showing you how to measure it so i'm measuring on the bearing i am using this flat surface up here basically because i can't hold it and do this camera work and try to do it over the top of the ball because there's too much shit going on at once okay so we're basically i'm basically just showing you how to do it i'm not don't take these measurements as this is what this knife is <clears throat> so on the scale you can't see the one right the one's not showing past this this line right here right i make sure i'm showing you exactly the line you guys can see it so this line right here on this edge you see how it's not see where that scale is right here you not past the one so you're under a hundred thousand so you just take your dial at this point so at this point if this was actual reading now granted this is upside down but that's 84 right so this is 84 thousandths it's not really 84 it's 078 which is basically 564s but i'm just showing you basically what this is okay so that's how you measure the actual bearing to figure out what bearing it is but let's say you got something like a zt and the bearing size is all kind of county wampus or you got a used knife and that's the wrong bearing size in it like how do you figure out what bearings go in your knife <clears throat> well first of all we got to figure out what size pivot we got right so the pivot's going to be the id just like we did a minute ago we measure the id so id od and then thickness right so the id of the bearing has to be bigger than the od of this pivot if that makes sense so this bearing on this pivot is measuring remember you can see the two you can't see the three so it's on this calipers it's showing 255 right or basically 255 and a half <clears throat> But in reality, that's a quarter inch pin, right? I, I, the calipers aren't precision. They used to be, they're not anymore. <clears throat> uh, so basically this pivot is a, is a quarter inch pivot. So you're looking for a quarter inch ID for this particular knife. OD, let's say that the bearings are flopping around in the pocket like a lot of ZTs do and you need, you wanna get a bearing that's a tighter fit. Uh, so how are we gonna measure that? We'll just measure the OD of the pocket, right? So take the calipers in here. And we're gonna measure the OD of this pocket. You see I'm twisting just a little bit to kind of make sure it's seated and stuff like that. If you look at the dial, you can see the four, but you can't see the five, okay? Actually, it's kind of hard, bad angle here. The way it's sitting, you can't really see it, but it's actually five, and then read the dial, 06, I think if my eyes are showing me right. So 506 is what it's showing you. So you could have a bang that the OD is up to 506, okay? <clears throat> so there is play in both bearings, OD and ID, so this way, like, wiggle this way and on the, the pivot itself so they do that for a reason basically you know but let's see if you can even see the track yeah you can see the track worn in see the track worn in once the track is worn in the bearing is going to ride that track so if you got a bearing that that track is out of center like someone put a bearing that's too small or too large in it or you can't i guess it can't be too small too large in it and it's just rolling around inside there and it's out of center which i have seen zts that way if you put another bearing in there to try to run it, it's gonna run across that track. It's just like you running across a dirt road and you're running out of the grooves, you know? That's the same thing you're gonna, your knife's gonna feel in that right there. Unless you get something like a taco bearing that has that, that um, steel wash that goes in there and it's gonna to have to be a smaller bearing. So once again, if you're measuring this thickness, this OD or this um, thickness of the, of the ball, basically when you put a taco bearing in there, you got to measure the thickness of that, what's called a washer and the bearing and it has to equal the same amount as your bearing does before you get started okay all right now let's see just for a hell of it we know that the bearing sits in this pocket and then rides on the blade right so let's see how deep the counterbore is on it this is just showing you how to use your calipers right here so this is going to be a, a depth check basically turn it where you can see it so you can see i'm just banking this in here i'm not all the way against the surface you see this little step in the caliper it just keeps me away from the edge just a hair okay and I'm gonna come in and bank on top of it. And you can see that the calipers, 
sorry I keep bumping this thing. I'm not cattywampus on the calipers. I'm trying to keep them as square as I can and touching two sides of that, that OD as I can at the same time. And then basically, whatever's hanging out of that is the depth of this, okay? So looking at our calipers, we can see the depth of that is basically 45 thousandths, 46 thousandths. 46 and a half thousandths, whatever it reads, my eyes are bad. All right, so that's a basic tutorial on how to measure for pockets, basically how to use calipers. You can use gauge pins. Let's say you don't have gauge pins. Let's do drills, all right? So let's just take it over here. Let's see, this janky ass drill. This is a quarter inch drill. I don't know if it says it. You probably can read it, I can't. Anyway, there it goes. Quarter inch drill, okay? So let's take a quarter inch drill. Obviously you don't wanna have one that's all chewed up on the shank, but let's just take a quarter inch drill, see if it fits in your pocket. And you're in your bearing, sorry, not in your pocket, in the bearings. You can see it fits in that bearing pretty good, so that's probably what OD is, right? So you can use that drill to figure out what the ID of your, of your bearing is. You can even take that same drill and put it in your blade and see how much it fits in that. And you can see it's just a little snug. I got a little bit of wiggle. So then you tell that that hole in there is a little over 250 thousandths or slightly a big quarter inch. A few ways to use a little tools, measure a few things, figure out what bearings you need so that if you get a used knife, kind of like I have recently, and the bearings just don't seem to be gelling, don't work right, you can figure out what bearing goes in there the right way. All right, quick tutorial, over. All right, finishing this one up. I hope that wasn't too uh, all over the place for you guys. Uh, I dig the fears for prey. We'll see how it works out in the long run, and uh, hopefully you learn a little something. I don't know if you guys like this kind of shit. I got to do more shit like this, but just let me know. All right, then. Y'all be cool. Till next week. Later, y'all.